I mean, we'll try. Uh, I, I, not really. I mean, I do a little bit of everything. So I, I mean, the, yeah, it, you, you did good. That was good. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm based in uh, Central Florida, so yeah, I get to see. I get to see. I'm about an hour south of. So. Uh oh. Um, an hour south of Orlando, or I mean. Disney, basically. Now we're south of Disney. I just realized I screwed up because my my, oh mic- my microphone was off, so the stream couldn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Redo, redo. I'm oh, gonna... holy, holy, holy. <laughs> take two, take two. All right, guys. Welcome to another episode of Drawing with Dinosaur Comics. Today we have um, Aiden Rouse. The paleontology lead at the Brevard Museum in Central Florida. Aiden, is there anything you want to say about yourself? <laughs> now you... No, it's not like you've already asked me this already. I know. <laughs> I literally just asked you. All right, so, okay. I guess I'm going to draw some Morrison dinosaurs. Probably do like a little scene. Wait. It's going to be fun. Oh, um... all right. Oh. All right. Oh, the stream was freaking out. Okay, there we go. All right. So, okay, Aiden, what is your um your paleo backstory, your origin story? So, um, I mean, I could I could go on and on with that, but it re- go on and on, dude. Started. Go on and on. I, I don't I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, we got we got hours, right? So yeah. yeah so I started. I mean, I was I think I the earliest like evidence i suppose of me being obsessed with dinosaurs is around age four in um 2005 mm-hmm. i found a um actually it was a it was a picture from um it was a picture at my um grandparents house and it was a um like a uh crayon drawing of a t-rex and a spinosaurus battling it was really bad <laughs> but uh it was it was kind of funny. It was like, oh, you know, this is like where the kind of all started and such. But um, I mean, I I've been obsessed with dinosaurs basically ever since I guess as I say around f- four years old. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really haven't been to the science of it until around eleven or twelve. I started actually going out and collecting fossils in Ohio, the Ordovician um, formations of Ohio, mm-hmm. and I found some pretty cool stuff. And and I think that really sparked my interest in the whole research aspect of it. So. Um, I would collect stuff and I would have to research like what these things are because I was so used to dinosaurs. I didn't know anything about invertebrates or these, any, any other weird animals that lived millions and millions of years before the dinosaur. So I had to educate myself. Um, and then eventually, um, I mean, I kind of self edu- educated myself to the point of, all right, I have a decent idea of what everything is. But it was kind of like going to middle school and stuff, or I mean, I know in some areas of the U.S. we don't have middle school, but here in Florida we have seventh and eighth grade or middle school. But it was like during middle school, the um, the um, the whole paleontology thing was kind of like a, a side thing I, I was doing, really like expressing uh, um, much into it, uh, and that really didn't happen until around two my beginning of my sophomore year mm-hmm. uh so you may be familiar with the company the dinosaur company um billions uh and i've been obsessed with their stuff i mean like i've been on their stuff ever since seven years old and i have a picture to prove it uh mm-hmm. and uh i heard that at the brevard zoo we were having a the the dinosaurs come in and i was like oh my god like i was su- super stoked so i was like i wonder if there's anywhere any way i can help out with the exhibit any way i could volunteer at all and so I reached out to a friend, uh, a zoo team that, as they call them, is a junior volunteer too. Mm-hmm. She got me connected with, um, with the education lead there. And um, I mean, the exhibit started. And what was the really cool thing about this exhibit it was really going into lots of the science. So, I mean, um, I had to like read some of the new literature that came out, kind of 
update all my knowledge. So, so it kind of forced me to um, kind of get back into the science of it all again. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like doing tours and stuff with, around all the animatronics. But what was really cool is at the end of our trail, we had this big tent. And in this tent, we had tables that had um, pr- uh, fossil preparation, um, fossil um, fossil prep stations. I don't know why I was trying to say that word weird. Um, but um, that's when that's where I learned how to actually prep fossils. So it was mm-hmm. cool. So I looked a lot while I was there. Um, I actually got to interact with real fossil specimens for really the first time. And I started to learn how to do, you know, some of the science through fossil prep. And um, then they have um, the education lead who was um, who was kind of the lead of the uh, he he always told stories about going out to Montana and digging up dinos and such. Mm-hmm. And then I heard about this fabled place called the lab. Um, the lab. And this was uh, <laughs> when I was in. Yeah, the lab. No, and that's still what we call we call, still call. of course i wasn't driving at the time so uh-huh. i i whoa aiden your connection is magical after wait, wait, hold up your connect your connection keeps freezing i'm sorry <laughs> oh no worries um actually i may i may move my setup here um, yeah. To where? Yeah. Go, go the ahead. building I'm in. It... Hold on, guys. We have some technical difficulties. <laughs> Give me one sec. All right, I, th- I think we're back. I think we're good. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, perfect. You're not freezing every two seconds. Okay. Yeah, no, it's for some reason, like, I moved 20 feet, and the connection got better all of a sudden, but I don't know. But, uh, hey, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, yeah, for the longest time, there's this place called The Lab, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I wasn't driving at the time. I mean, I was only a sophomore in high school, so I didn't, I, I 
was I was just beginning to do all my oh. driver's ed. Wait, how old are you now? I'm 19. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah. So there's been so this life always been like told in what I, in big fables and such of all of these people going to the lab, me up at the lab, and here I am just going home, um, all all the time after these exhibits, um. And then one time, my uh, my buddy, um, who uh, work, who um, I eventually uh, befriended at the uh, at the exhibit, took me there, and it was a magical place. I mean, dinosaur bones everywhere. It was prep stations. I mean, it was awesome. Then I've really been there for the past three years, prepping out dinosaurs and such. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started doing the whole science communication thing here on Instagram. I've been on Instagram for shoot three to four years maybe i don't know i don't Dang. know Part so from before you even turned 18 before you could even oh you can't even drink a beer yet <laughs> <laughs> no no but um yeah but it's interesting because i recently really if you look at my entire instagram feed i haven't really done paleontology until like 2018 2019 maybe well probably 2008 so i mean i've been only doing the whole science communication thing uh, for around three years now, um, but really, I'm shoot. Uh, it's kind of I'm trying to like backtrack all all the stuff I've been doing. But really, I think the majority of my um, experience and stuff, all the experience I've had and all the opportunities I've had, has generated mm -hmm. off of the three years of me being here on social media and such. So I mean, this is a fine example. I mean, I'm on here right now, so. <laughs> there you go. No, that's all. That's yeah. super awesome. So, like, do you have like a formal education in paleontology? No. <laughs> um, the very to keep it very brief. No. Um, so in high school, I did this like dual enrollment program where you were able to do like high school courses, um, and do um do some coursework over the local community college, mm -hmm. and um. Unfortunately, I was only able to the um, high school only allowed me to do my associates in arts, um, and uh, so I was stuck with that for the two years. So I have college education, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then after I graduated um, last year, and uh, and they're like, "Yeah, um, we see you're interested in paleontology. Would you be interested in um, switching over to an AS degree, associates in sciences, mm -hmm. because it'll be more." Direct that's what I want to do but it was either I used the three courses that I had done in my um, AA um, that were that were that can be used towards my associates of sciences or I'll have or I could just finish up the remaining like 20% of my AA degree so I'm just doing that now um, but really high school education in some college is all I have right now mm -hmm. so you don't really but need a big formal er education to be like even involved in the science at all oh absolutely uh, absolutely not i mean i think actually if i'm gonna be honest uh, when i started uh, when I, during my sophomore year i wasn't even doing the whole com community college thing mm -hmm. so i mean the, really the beginning of i had no you know formal background in education or any of that stuff so yeah i mean I feel like as long as you're, you know what you're talking about and you know what you're saying, you, you could get away with basically anything. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of what I figured out. So that's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. So like, dang. Okay. So you have you've had this passion since you were a kid, right? And then now you've gotten your basically yeah. you've basically gotten your foot in the door. What are your main like functions at the uh, Brevard Museum? So, um, 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 has been very loose. I've been very loose with them recently. And the reason being is because, um, the museum was owned by the Florida Historical Society for the longest time. And I was connected with them when I started, um, um, volunteering with them and, uh, basically introducing myself like, Hey, I know, I know everything. I know things about fossils and stuff. Um, I can help you guys with some stuff out mm -hmm. with some stuff and such. Uh, and, um, well, as of a couple months ago, the, um, city of Coco actually took over the museum as the floor historical, 
Historical Society withdrew from the museum. Um, so it's kind of weird, having a weird transition right now uh, between um, the city owning it and such. But uh, what's good about that is actually this opens up a lot of really awesome opportunities. So right now I'm primarily a docent um, that that is kind of the paleontological educator, if you would, um, at the museum. Um, the museum isn't big. I mean, I it's nowhere near the size of like, um, like the American Museum yeah. or anything. <laughs> this is like your local county museum or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's nothing spectacular. I mean, but honestly, it's we have some really nice stuff. I mean, we have a mastodon, we have a um, Ramotherium, a giant ground sloth, um, a smilodon, a megalodon gel. I mean, we you know we have the basics for Florida paleontology basically. Mm -hmm. um, but um it's been restricted for the most part just because of um the florida historical society and having to go through stuff with them but the the thing that is better now with the state of Coco that um me and my buddy who um i would consider my co-worker basically or um yeah yeah my co-worker have like thought out like all right now that we're in this transition stage we could kind of plan out some really cool stuff to kind of boost the museum because museum believe it or not it's in like the middle of this neighborhood it's really weird like it's like like when, literally like you're just like, like you're biking along and then all of a sudden it's in the middle of a random neighborhood something like that basically, like there used to be like a planetarium there and there's actually um the community college campus is right on the other side of it so i mean it's it the area was supposed to be like a you know education based um area for for a museum to be in uh but a neighborhood has just like grown around it basically mm -hmm. um but yeah it's but like what you said like we have people literally just ride their bikes along um the street and actually see the museum and like hey let's go let's go into the museum and such so i mean it is kind of like that uh but uh with this with the city now owning it we've come up with ideas like um, getting access to all the construction pits and doing um, fossil um, reclamation in the um, um, in the pits before they um, get destroyed and stuff, um, and actually bring them to the museum and having a actual paleontology collection. Just because the archive and such isn't very well cataloged, I guess it's very disorganized at the moment. Mm -hmm. That's another one of our goals: get everything kind of segmented and organized. Um, but it, it, it's 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 a long project in the making. But if if it goes as well as we prospect it to be, it's going to turn out to be a really it's going it's going to turn out to be really really awesome. So yeah, that sounds like a super like exciting like project. A skink of death in the chat said like imagine being able to walk to a museum from your home any day. I know. I wish for me it's a it's for me it's literally a half an hour drive um, from my from my house. Um, so it's not in my neighborhood, basically. Um, it's a little bit of ways from, from where I'm at, but the, it's really interesting because in this area of, of central Florida growing up, I've never expected for there to be this much like access to the, to the paleontological realm, basically. Cause I mean, we have the Brevard museum, which mm. I'm, which is, they're my home base, I guess. Um, then I have my lab, uh, which is in the area as well. And then we also have um, the Dinosaur Store and Museum, which is another place I'm very good. Uh, I'm very intermixed and con connected with and such. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting. We have all these different like paleontological related facilities within the area of, of a part of Florida that you want to really expect this stuff in. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Are there like not a lot of dinosaurs in Florida? Oh, there's no dinosaurs in Florida. Oh, what? What? Oh, was Florida so, under the water during the Mesozoic era? Is that why? Absolutely. Yep. So, um, the oldest terrestrial fossils that you can find remotely close to the surface is around Eocene in age. So, around, uh, you know, 50 million years old or so. Uh, but most of that's like echinoids and sea biscuits and stuff. But once you progressively move further in time, you can start finding like the megalodon shark teeth and all the different types of sharks, the whales. Then you get into like terrestrial stuff where you find the three-toed horses, um, gompathiers, really weird elephants. And, but then things start to pick up um, 
going to the Pleistocene. So, I mean, you find tons of mammoths, mastodons, smilodons. I mean, the list goes on. In my opinion, I mean, and I have the entire Florida fossil record back this up. Florida probably has the most eco- paleo ecological diverse ecosystems in in the world, basically. Um, because the fossil record here is so rich with a variety of different organisms, it's like every day you'll 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 find an animal that was around in Florida that you saw in your backyard, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, like I mean, I never knew um, before I visited the Florida Museum up in Gainesville, which is the University of Florida's museum, that we had rat snakes. Literally, they tracked down these fossils back to like rat snakes and such. To this very specific group of snakes, um, I mean, in Florida, like we had bur- burrowing kangaroos. We had. Well, y'all um, had. Wait, 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 wait. There was kangaroos in Florida. We had a relative of kangaroos. It was a kangaroo-like animal. Um, I've heard very little on it, but I remember someone mentioned it to me. It's like burrowing kangaroo. I was like, what the heck? It was like some weird Miocene animal. Um, but we had Gila monsters here in Florida. Um, I mean, th- these are animals you wouldn't think of being here, but we had them basically. It's really interesting. I mean, rhinos. I mean, we had s- such a large diversity of animals living here. I'm just so saying, it's, this it's, is the first I'm hearing of Florida having rhinos. <laughs> That's insane. Well, I mean, I could go on. Well, it's kind of cool because I always tell people, did you know that we had lions, jaguars, and cheetahs with along with saber cats roaming florida at one time okay i knew that we had like the american lion but i didn't know like all the yeah. other stuff too yeah i mean we have cheetahs in the fossil record here in florida jaguars um we have a, we have relatives of the llamas the camelids um we have horses i mean i could go into real specific stuff like i mean striped skunks raccoon possums and this and it's crazy because a lot of the genera that we see in the fossil record is a extant genera still Mm -hmm. so um like for example the fossils that we see with jaguars it's the same it's the same genus and species as the modern extant species so it's panthera Panthera. oh it's the same genus and species yeah it's it's the same um i mean it's cool because i can relate to that whenever i'm doing tours and stuff it's like like here's a raccoon fossil, but it's literally the same raccoon that you could go out and watch burrow through your trash can. Basically, I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's you can Florida, or at least in terms of Pleistocene stuff. But I'm, but again, Florida's probably one of the best examples of this stuff. Is that you can you can relate to this stuff. It's it's very similar yet different, basically. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. Um, Florida, Florida's pretty awesome, though. We have lots of cool stuff here. I know. I, I Personally, I make fun of Florida a lot, and I feel bad. But, <laughs> you know, y'all, y'all got some cool oh, stuff, oh, still. So. And, and we have some of the weirdest people, trust me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Florida, Florida man. He, he's among us. Florida man. <laughs> trust me. But, um, yeah, no, that's super awesome. It's crazy. Why do you think the um, big cat species died out? Um, so actually, it's rather interesting because um, it's a lot, a lot of people overthink it. A lot of people actually overthink why these saber cats went extinct. Um, and it's been right in front of them the entire time. It's the saber teeth. And, and, and the story I always tell is once upon a time, there's a little animal that had these saber teeth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he's like Dynictus um, or um, Holophonus. Holof- Holof- I could never pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had these, you know, these really elong- elongated canines. And then conversion evolution takes over and basically life goes, hey, this is a really cool trait. Let's let's make these teeth re- much more, much more, much more um, exaggerated in size and let's see how it works. Um, so then came the scimitar tooth cat, the uh, scimitar tooth, um, or yeah, scimitar Tooth cats like um, Xenosmilus, uh, um, Homothorum. Are those the uh, ones where it's like their like jaw, like like bottom jaw extends like really weirdly? Those are your um, th- th- I, they're those are very early. I don't think they're considered um 
I don't think they're considered um, scimitar tooth though. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Um, but I mean, we see cats like yeah, like dino. Um, I think dino dinophilus is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, homo um, homotherum or hermotherum, and then you have uh, xenosmilus, which is really dominant here in Florida. And it's interesting because I have a replica of a homotherum uh, canine, and I also have a smilodon canine. And when when you put them side to side, you, there's so many differences in the morphology. Um, scimitar teeth, um, scimitar teeth um, are much more broad in shape. They're much thinner. Um, but they also were slightly more serrated. Mm-hmm. So, well, basically, yeah. Oh. Wait, wait, we're having we're having internet issues again. Decide. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is working out really well. Let's try this. I was like, we're, we're doing so good for a while. <laughs> and now... Let me know when it's um, okay, better. Yeah, it, I think it's stabilized now. Uh, because I moved my hand like over here towards like the dead zone and it decides to freak out. Mm-hmm. I don't know what my Wi-Fi, but anyways. 5Gs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, you Trust were saying. Me. Yeah. Um. So are we back live and stuff? Now? Yeah, we know we're back. We're back. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Oh, 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 okay. So, yeah. Um, but then came your saber tooth cats, your Mericordante or Macaridante, or however the heck you pronounce it, with um Macaridus, Smilodon, your other saber tooth cats, and those teeth are more thick, and they're but they're more elongated teeth, mm-hmm. and 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 therein lies the problem because if you look out of how much that saber sticks out of the jaw. Mm-hmm. Imagine this. Imagine you you went out to your backyard, you grabbed a stick, and you started twisting around in the ground after you jabbed into the ground. What's going to happen? It's going to break, right? Yeah. So think you're, you're, you're smiling on you, and you track down like a bison. Well, once you hop on top of that bison, well, first of all, before you even hop on that bison, you got to chase it down. Look at Smilodon. It's it's um, it's femur and its hind limbs are really fragile in t- in terms of their bone structure. Mm-hmm. So if they were to run and turn a sharp corner, their their legs are done. They're, they broke both of their legs. Jesus. Um, yeah, no joke. And actually, it's interesting because short-faced bears have the same problem. Um, a lot of the other, ca- uh, well, I mean, most of your saber cats ha- um, across the board have this really weird like bone structure but the interesting thing is especially with smilodon they have these really robust shoulders mm-hmm. um and they had a really strong ca- calcaneus um uh, on their back so we can theorize that these animals were more of an ambush predator that huh, that probably pounced on their prey um so yeah so it has to make sure not to kill itself while while um chasing down a bison and then after that you gotta jump on it then what's gonna happen if you sink your teeth into it because here's the thing that bison's not gonna want you to kill it right <laughs> obviously <laughs> yeah. yeah um so it's gonna be moving around it's gonna it's gonna be trying to get you off of it so you gotta wrestle this bison down which which um then takes your strong shoulder muscles and all um and all your upper body to kind of wrestle it down until the animal gets exhausted. Then you got to specifically calculate the part of the throat for that jaw to open up with that 90 de- degree gape and actually crunch down on the windpipe and actually kill the animal. Mm-hmm. It's very specialized. And if you compare it to the other large felids that have these, this very universal design, conical teeth, um, a long tail. That was, that was another thing that Smilodon probably didn't have because cats use their tails for stability. Yeah. Smilodon's tail is not very long. Um, but um, if you look at, you know, cheetahs, jaguars, and lions, they all have a very similar morphology. And, mm. well, I mean, considering that we're seeing jaguars, lions, and cheetahs exist in the modern world, I would say their, their 
skeletal structure and their and their morphology kind of held up to the modern standard, I guess, mm -hmm. which basically put the whole saber tooth idea out of the out of out of the picture, basically. Um, but it's interesting because there's actually a cat. I think it's in Brazil that is has weird long canine, but they're not totally exaggerated like Smilodon was. But it's interesting because all these people are like, "Are the, is this saber tooth? Is this like whole idea of convergence starting to come haunt us again?" And saber teeth are going to be making a thing again. Mm -hmm. There's that whole discussion as well. So. Yeah, cats are, cats are weird, um, especially if you look at the whole cladistics of them. Because I spent an entire month trying to figure out the relation of saber cats, um, and yes, there's false saber cats, which are part of the Feliformia group, but they're but they're not attached to like modern felids and such. So it's it's weird. Wait, what, um, what makes them also is that that they're just called false saber cats because they look like your average saber cat, but they're not part of the group, like phylogenically they're, yeah it's kind of weird because they're early um they're very early saber cats and actually the those weird the thylo i cannot the ones that have the weird elongated all those i believe are not um true saber cats either those are considered false saber cats okay Dang. yeah they're kind of i don't know jack about killing like, cat <laughs> about prehistoric cats man i i didn't know it for for shoot for two years until I started like okay I'm just gonna sit down and like spend an entire month trying to figure out the the relation between these animals I had to read tons of papers and such um, has had to um, visit museums had to talk to a few people but I have a decent uh, um, phyl phylogeny tree with all the um, relations and such on it so mm. yeah interesting interesting so what other Cladistic. what other yeah. um animals have you like worked on? I mean, I'm a dinosaur person. If I'm gonna be honest, I'm a dinosaur person. Um, I I've worked on a multitude of different animals. I mean, in terms of dinosaurs, uh, my first prep project was a Triceratops rib. Nice. Um, and then let's see, I'm trying to think of some other cool stuff. I've worked on um, Tyrannosaur material, scrap Tyrannosaur material, but nothing near complete. Um, but I've also put together, um, some partial triceratops skulls as well, um, that turned out pretty awesome, actually. Some, some of the, um, some of the skull pieces I've worked on have just turned out phenomenal, beautiful bone texture and such. Mm -hmm. But I've also worked on, um, sauropods. Um, I've worked on a, um, Camarasaurus foot before. That was pretty awesome. That was actually probably, actually, that was probably my second to third prep project. And it's cool because we still have it in the lab and I go in and see it once in a while because it's like um for the longest time um in this jacket we had three uh or we had yeah um we had three toes exposed um okay so i actually think it was an allosaurus we're thinking it was an allosaurus foot and then um i started working on it. i found the fourth uh and i found the fourth digit so i was like yes i know we were still missing one digit for a camarasaurus to have its five um, for the Camarasaurus because it has five digits, but I basically was the person who kind of figured out, I was like, oh, this is an Allosaurus. This is a, um, probably a, um, sauropod. And I then realized, then I then was told it was found in association with some other Camarasaur material. So yeah, it was pretty cool. That's one of the coolest pieces I've worked on. I, 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 I'd say basically. Mm -hmm. oh, that sounds super exciting, dude. Dang. Cause I, I personally have never worked with any fossils i mean when i was a kid i would dig holes and like <laughs> tell myself that this rock i found was like a t-rex bone who did something. it yeah i know who did it right um what was your favorite um dinosaur to work on oh now that's a hard one because i worked with a multitude of um stuff from the from the two medicine formation mm -hmm. um so i've worked on i mean i've probably have most of my prep hours in Myasaura material. So, um, Myasaura is definitely one of my favorites um, just because I've gotten to kind of work with it um, for the most part. But I think one of the coolest pieces I got to work on, which became one of my favorite, 
mm-hmm. what was um, it was right when COVID happened and we were shutting down the lab for a little bit because you know the the scare and everything. Yeah, um, yeah so I went in there and they and I was given a um, prep project and it was a lots of basically lots of tin foil, but they I was told it was all one vertebra, so I was like sweet. And for and um, it came from a a um, site where it was a mysore bone bed. So I was expecting to be some weird Myasaur um, vert. But then I started working on it and um, it was it was weird because it didn't like match up to a Myasaur vert. And I put some pieces together, I put the neural spine together, put the transverse processes to, together. I'm mm-hmm. still working on the centra, uh, the middle round part. Um, and then I bring it in and I show um, the, my guys after um, after our lab opened up, and I said, "This looks kind of weird. What do you guys think?" And and then the the eyes get big, and they're like, "That looks tyrannosaur." Oh, so I was like, "Oh," <laughs> and um, then I like looked at a picture of a um, tyrannosaurus uh, vertebra, and I was like, "Oh, the process is kind of match." So we're thinking it's probably one of the only tyrannosaur pieces that came out in that entire site, which kind of mixes up some stuff so it's it's really interesting um mm-hmm. that uh of all this mysore material there's just this one piece of um probably gorgosaurus in there we're thinking it's, it's really small for for displutosaurus so it's probably gorgosaurus mm-hmm. but it's really cool to find all of these duckbill dinosaurs and then just this predator in there so it's that's probably one of the coolest pieces i i've got to work on and i'm still working on basically what is your Speaking of Gorgosaurus, and this is a question I always ask, what is your opinion on the Gorgosaurus Albertosaurus debate? Are they the same animal? Well, actually, um, there's some interesting stuff with Gorgosaurus coming out. I can't talk about it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, I can because my friend told me, and he, he said, yeah, just go ahead, because I've already told multitude to my friends. There are a multitude of new Gorgosaurus, and I think, I'm just, just to stay safe, um, I'm, that's pretty much the extent of what I'm going to say, but from what I've heard, there's going to be some really cool descriptions of some new Gorgosaur material coming out from Canada too, okay. uh, to help, um, split the two, um, uh, because very recently, um, for the longest time we thought in the Judith River Formation, because, um, in the Judith River Formation you had, uh, for the longest time it was Displeasaurus, Gorgosaurus, and Albertosaurus, but then Albertosaurus was taken out of the picture, um, in some weird paper that came out, I think in 2015, 2016, um, and it was moved back up to its like major locale up in Alberta. Um, so we don't find Alberta source here in North America anymore. Uh, and then, um, so I mean, in my opinion, because of the diversity, um, I, 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 I still split them. I split Gorgosaurus and Alberta source. Okay. And it's interesting. Remember, I was, I. I remember on Instagram, it was like the biggest thing for the longest time of Gorgosaurus versus Albertosaurus, but it's kind of like worn off for a little bit, but um, until I guarantee when the, all this new stuff gets finally put out and such, it's gonna it's going to... Gonna shake things up? Yeah, it's gonna shake a few things up. So, it, I'm, int- I, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see what comes out of it. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Good thing I didn't. <laughs> so when I made the Albertosaurus comic with um, Hillary and then and Doctor Holt, um, one thing I did not want to mention was them being the same genus. So I'm glad I yeah. omitted that whole thing. Because <laughs> I mean, and here's the thing, and and I always tell this when people talk to me about if I'm a lumper or a splitter, and I always say, well, in my opinion, the pace depending on how much evidence you have. It's the the more the merrier. I mean, how many species of dinosaurs have we discovered? Over mm-hmm. a little over a thousand, right? In the world, in the modern world, we have nine thousand species of birds. Let that sink in. <laughs> yeah. Then, then expand that by millions. So, in my opinion, the more genera we have, the better. But then there are the cases where I'm like, uh, um, uh, you know, like, eh, eh close enough. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But then I'm like, then there's some cases of like lumping that I kind of agree with. Um, it was actually interesting. I was over at my buddy's house uh, a few days ago. He had this early um, 
it was the Princeton Field Guide to Dinosaurs by Gregory Paul. Mm-hmm. I think it was the mid mid nineties or something. Oh, the first but edition. Is, yeah, that's a cool book. But he's a lumper. He is such a lumper because, yeah. it, and he has Centrosaurus in there, but he lumps like Pachyrhinosaurus and Styracosaurus in with Centrosaurus. Yeah, I mean, he did that with, like, Velociraptor and Deinonychus, too, and, like, a bunch of other Jimmyosaurs, right, into Deinonychus, yep. I believe? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. He did that with um, Myasaur and Brachiosaurus as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, but, like, in my opinion, like, I'm a, I'm a lumper in the case of Saurophaganax. I'm a huge Allosaurus Maximus person. All right, um, is, there, is there research that it's not out that you could tell about that? Oh, no? actually... Well, so I'm going to give you my spiel on Sorfagnax here real quick because okay. I um, brought it up. Um, so when Sorfagnax was described, because I've done tons of research on Allosaurus. Allosaurus is probably my main focus right now. Um, mm-hmm. and, or I guess Morrison Theropods or, you know what, just the Morrison Formation is probably my biggest research topic at the moment. Um, just because we we think we know so much about the Morrison Formation, but we really don't. Um I mean, I'll, um, I mean, that's a whole other time, but uh, the um, with the, with Saurophaganax and Allosaurus, so, so when you're describing Allosaurus, you're looking for a few bones in the skull. Mm-hmm. You're looking for the maxilla bone, and you're looking for some of the, um, uh, the shoot, some, I'm just going to say some of the cranial bones, some of the cranial elements. Um, and with Saurophaganax, all they found was um, a part of the surangular and the jugal. Mm-hmm. and other weird cranial parts that weren't diagnostic to Allosaurus. So they said, here, it's, a, it's, it's in a state where Allosaurus isn't really known from. Let's slap, let's slap the new genus on it. Mm-hmm. But um, I've, been, I, I've been really connected with academics recently. I mean, I've been doing lots of collaborations with um, the academic community. Mm-hmm. And um, me, and, um, me and one of my um, paleontologist friends were talking about it. And he brings up a good point that really no one has measured any Sorphagonax remains by hand ever since the holotypes. So, hmm. so really, the paper is kind of like biased in a way, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, it's because, I mean, I gotta look back at the paper, um, but it was like, no one has really measured all every Sorphagonax fossil ever since and they haven't compared it to allosaurus or any other um or any al- other allosauroid so it's um that kind of like raised some questions like so how truthful are these people being the holotype paper um so i would expect alice or sorfaganax to be lumped as allosaurus maximus coming up i i, I that's that's how i'm seeing it uh, that's exactly how i'm seeing it Okay, that's really interesting because like I've been very curious about like Sorphagonax. Like it's not it, it's not exactly like my favorite dinosaur. I think it's a really cool like I mean first of all it has a really badass name, okay? Sorphagonax, lizard eater, oh. eating king. That is yeah. a sick name. And uh, um, king of- yeah, yeah, king of the lizard eaters, yeah. And I've just been like wondering like is it actually its own thing? Cuz I remember Dr. Holtz gave a talk um in Ikalaka pretty recently or not really it was about like six months ago i want to say i forgot when it was like last july or so and he was I discussing think, that wait. what's up i think i know i think i know the talk you're talking about i, I want to say i've seen it but i just can't remember at this at it, it was on like comparing the ecologies of like the morris information and the hill creek formation yeah. and they were discussing yeah, that's... like yeah there was more like diversity among like theropods during the morris information compared to well, well, thing is, um, so look, so actually, because we're talking about Morrison, I figured I, I would mention that everything you know about the Morrison formation is wrong. Really? Everything you know. Because here's the thing. I, me, and a few other people who, who are all, most, it's actually interesting, most of the paleontologists I'm friends with are, like, very invested in the Morrison formation. Mm-hmm. And we've all had really interesting um discussion about what the heck is going on with the morrison formation um um, and especially when we um talk about allosaurus because 
if you look at half the specimens out there of allosaurus 90 or 80 to 90 percent are labeled for gls right mm-hmm. allosaurus for gls allosaurus germanici um which was described in 2020 fun fact um actually real quick side tangent i found a um talk by the guy who runs my lab um and he was talking about the danicori from where um, dracula was found that um the allosaurus um germanici was mm-hmm. found and it was funny because this was this was a talk that was recorded back in 2011 um so i don't know exactly when they went out digging the dana quarry but it was fun there's like this second clip in there today he's like and then we discovered this allosaurus specimen called dracula mm-hmm. and i was like wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute. um so i like literally called him i was like so you found dracula he's like yeah He's like, why didn't, you tell, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> you never asked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm in the outsource. Like, why haven't you told me? Um, but uh, but here's the interesting thing. Because if you look at the geologic range for outsource dramatic site, it goes from around 155 to around 152 million years. Um, where outsource for GLS goes from um, 150 to 104. And, or yeah, 150 to 144. There's a few million years gap in there. Um, but if you look at the variation within the skull, um, there are some people who have argued that all this variation is based off of things like sexual dimorphism and all these other weird um, topics that go into what could cause these weird these weird um, variations in these in the skull. Mm-hmm. But in my opinion, when you're looking at all the allosaurus, um, skulls. If you took a like big collage of all the Alistair skulls, you'll notice that most of the skulls have something weird with them, and you'll notice trends. And it's actually interesting because if you know how Alistair um, Germanensi has like the really weird um, like crest almost. Yeah. On, on. Well, it's actually interesting because me and my buddy um, who are doing who are doing this research laid all the pictures out i mean these are just google images that we were um uh, extracting and we placed them all in like a timeline from really the oldest in terms of their strate- stratigraphic um age from what quarry they're found and such all the way up to around 144 million years ago mm-hmm. and you'll know that, that process actually kind of goes away the, um, the further you go into the Jurassic, it's really interesting, uh-huh. um, and you'll see this um, trend of these features kind of like diminishing, and you'll see Allosaurus' skull kind of turn into the more hatchet-like skull shape that we'll see later in like Acrocanthosaurus and such. Mm-hmm. It's a really interesting evolutionary um, trend, um, but yet in the mix of that, you're seeing these what in my opinion, looks like all these weird like species that are that are intermixed in there. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I've mentioned this to um, uh, Matthew Mossberger, the Morrison Museum. We were talking once, and I kind of brought up the idea um, to him. And he was like, no, you're exactly right. There's probably like six to seven species of allosaurus. Oh, so, that's, a, that's a lot. We just, we just lump them all into one thing. I'm and, guessing. And, of it is is um we call it a waste bucket taxon so we so you'll take outsource fragilis and basically slap name slap it any fossil you find mm-hmm. um of Alice without any geological context and that's the problem is that this whole topic with outsource can be can be put into any other morrison animal um for example i know we're we're probably gonna have a few new species of chimerosaurus um, okay. Same thing, um, a patasaurus. I think I've heard there's probably going to be two to three species of a patasaurus, um, and way more than two species of stegosaurus. I can't say how much because I know that's in in the works right now. Uh huh. Um, but there's going to be more than what we know of stegosaurus. Um, what, what about um? So it's a big split. brontosaurus. So no, actually, um, I'm I'm. I'm pretty confident in that research that was um, 2015. Mm-hmm. 
split of brontosaurus versus a pastor and, and i thought it was a really clever thing that they did because they took all supposed brontosaurus specimens and uh, compared it to the apatosaurus specimens i've been fortunate enough to actually see the skull that they used in that paper mm -hmm. um of the apatosaurus lusiae um skull that they used to compare and um differentiate from uh um, brontosaurus uh but in my opinion considering of how diverse morrison is there's probably there's more. some it's kind of a weird thorpots are weird so because um my recent paper or my little article that i did recently that's now um mm -hmm. published on, on the galeomopus yeah on galeomopus it's um and i've actually discovered a lot of really interesting things um mm -hmm. So, Galeomopus is a diplodocid, um, but it's known from the Halley Stevens quarry um, in Colorado. But it's a interesting diplodocid, and the reasoning is, is um, I at my uh, at the dinosaur store museum, um, they have a replica of. I actually recently found out it's not Diplodocus um, necessarily. I mean, depending on who you're talking to, it's actually Seismosaurus. Which okay. is another diplo, which is which was thought to be one of the largest diplodocids, uh, mm -hmm. and um, but for the sake of all the new literature and actually considering that my that my paleontologist friend is actually the person that lumped um, Seismosaurus and Diplodocus together, I'm just going to call it Diplodocus halorum. So I was looking at um, Diplodocus halorum, and um, this was really interesting because uh, I look I was looking at the limb the limb proportions. And so on Galeomopus, the femur is around 42 to 44 inches. Okay. On, on, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna call it Seismosaurus for now, just, just so things don't get too confusing. Mm -hmm. so then, Seismosaurus, um, so this femur is 60 inches. Now, this is where things get really interesting because the femur, or I mean, the humerus on Galeomopus is only like 40 inches. So it's almost as big as the um, as the femur, but on seismosaurs, the the humerus is only like thirty six inches. Mm -hmm. So it's only the length of the femur, which is interesting, um, because those proportions are to totally separate. Um, and actually, if you look at the posture of the skeleton. It almost looks like the, the, the back arches in a way. So it looks like it has this weird hump on it. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the vertebra counts are really crazy as well on, uh, on uh, diplodocids because on Galeomopus, you have like 98 um, total vertebra vertebrae and around 70 of them are in the, are in the tail alone. That's a lot of, that's so, a lot of vertebrae. <laughs> no, crazy. Um, and literally, like, you'll get down to the, um, it was caudal vertebra 70. It was like three and a half inches in length and around half a, half an inch in height. Mm -hmm. It's that, I mean, it's, it's that tiny. Um, and it's just crazy to, to be like, all right, you think you found the end of the tail, but you really haven't. <laughs> uh, because who knows how many more vertebra or how or vertebrae that there could have been um and it's and it's kind of a weird topic with sauropods because on diplodocus if you if you like if you google how many caudal vertebrae caudal vertebrae diplodocus has mm -hmm. it'll say it ranges from 70 to 80. there's not like a set amount of caudal vertebrae that diplodocus has because yeah, we don't know um, yeah 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 again you're still trying to figure out where the heck the tail ends um <laughs> Uh, it's been kind of merging towards 80 um, within more more diplodocids being described and such but it, it, I just think there's going to be way more variation among the gen amongst each each genera in the diplodocid family so mm -hmm. um, yeah sauropods are weird cladistics are weird don't get into dinosaur taxonomy it, it will fry your brain <laughs> it'll make your head hurt <laughs> Oh, trust me, it, 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 it's hard for me to compute all of it, like talking about it, because it's such a really in-depth in topic. Mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, because then then you have to go into the whole uh, um, paleo. Um, shoot, I can't even think right now. Uh, it's like eleven o'clock here. I think. So. No, I feel it, dude. No, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Um, the whole paleo politics side of it, like, are you a lumber or a splitter? And then there's that whole stuff, and people can't make up their minds. So mm-hmm. that's why y'all papers coming out about all this stuff, especially with sauropods. Um, because I know, like, currently Ultrasaurus isn't a thing anymore. Seismosaurus isn't a thing anymore. Um, and of course, for the longest time, Brontosaurus wasn't a thing anymore. Okay, I didn't know so, that about about Seismosaurus. I, I knew that about the other one, but I didn't know that about Seismosaurus. Interesting. Yeah. Um, it was actually um, my t- paleontologist friend. Uh, he he said he he um, he's mentioned to me like, yeah, I'm the one who lumped Seismosaurus and such. Um, and I think that all those papers can be on fossil crates. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, because he did he did both Ultrasaurus and Seismosaurus, so that's how I know um, both of those. But again, all of those are subject to change because someone's going to come back and battle that. Um, As always. <laughs> yeah. Actually, um, now that we're on the topic of lumping and such, I did want to, um, in the Paleo Palace chat, you may have um, heard um, when the whole... Um, the new Brachylophosaurus from New Mexico. Remember that? Yeah, that, that came out. That came out. That was, the paper was by Western Science Center, right? Was it called or- Ornatops? Yeah, Ornatops. I, I, if I'm gonna be honest, I'm skeptical on that. Um, I'm very skeptical on that, and I and I didn't want to make anything sound too harsh because I know the paper just came out. And they're still analyzing and stuff. But I just have a bad feeling that that's going to be lumped. And the reasoning is, is because the reference material that they use in it, um, they reference pro a lot in the paper. And pro um, and they have the charts in there, like, this is where pro is in terms of the stratigraphic age. It's very close to that of Ornithops. Mm-hmm. And um, if we look at dinosaurs like um, Gryposaurus, Gryposaurus is known all the way from uh, from Texas to Alberta, mm-hmm. and under, it's multiple species, but still all under Gryposaurus. So I have a bad feeling that someone in the near future is gonna is gonna take Ornithops and lump it with Probrachylophosaurus. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other interesting thing is, and the paper didn't make sense in some areas because they they went back and forth with referencing stuff to Brachylophosaurus and Probrachylophosaurus, but. They mentioned Edmontosaurus regalius in there, which Wait, why? makes no, it doesn't make no sense. It doesn't make any sense. It was something with the skull materials, like uh, one of the skull um, one skull pieces was like resembled um, Edmontosaurus. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's weird, and, and and this is where paleopolitics comes into play because they they think this is an they they again. Props to everyone at the Science Center, right? I give them all props. I mean, it, it takes a long time to describe a dinosaur. Yeah, and then okay? plus you gotta get it, like, you know, passed, and then it gets it reviewed, and obviously it takes, like, you, you submit it, it probably takes, like, a year, like, a year, maybe a little less oh. than a year for it to come out. Oh, maybe trust me, more. it's gonna... From from knowing current experience, it's gonna take more... It, it probably took more than three years. And the reason why I say that... And this is, and I'm going to get into a little bit of paleopolitics here. It's because it's known from the, the, the Bisque, it's, I'm just going to call it the Bisque formation because I know that's the first four letters okay. um, in New Mexico. And that um, formation is known from Dynamita- Dynamitera and that other Ankylosaur, right? Mm-hmm. That was published back in 2018. If you're going to, now think of this logistically. If you want to get people excited about a new formation, what dinosaurs from that formation are going to prioritize publishing? Theropods. Tyrant specifically. That's who, yeah. Oh, ne- necessarily, this isn't a new genera of pro of Brachylophosaur, basically. Mm-hmm. They, it's just, they've been putting this on the back burner um, so they can prioritize the the whole um, Dynamitera, new Tyrannosaur type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's, um, yeah. Yeah, paleopolitics. Well, what every paper you'll see has to do with paleopolitics in some some way or another. Uh, 
every yeah. Spinosaurus paper. <laughs> God, it started. Uh, now, and, and it was actually funny because um, uh, the Dinosaur Store Museum they got a sculpted um, skull of Spinosaur, a um, sculpted Spinosaur skull out there, and they have like Paleoard in there, but they um, have old Paleoard, so it's the bipedal Spinosaurus, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and literally, they told um, one of the museum staff um, who I'm friends with. I'm friends with all the museum staff there. I know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, came up to me, um, he was like, "Yeah, um, the day after um, we set this out on display, that that entire paper on spinosaurus being quadrupedal and stuff came out, <laughs> and they already had all the signage in it um, set inside the case with the skull and such that had the, the old spinosaurus reconstructions on it. Uh huh. So." Yeah, that that sucked. Yeah, I mean right now I mean, it's just... not even considered like by pe- like quadrupedal anymore, right? It, it keeps changing. Actually, interesting because I remember at, even literally like it was two weeks after that paper came out that there's already another paleontologist like already stating that it's bipedal again and that the center of mass was like being brought back and that paper was kind of, and that topic um in the top the topic um around that paper was like drug out until basically today basically mm-hmm. um but it, it, i remember seeing because i was um i was at um at my community college doing um work on a laptop and i remember because i was actually doing a spinosaurus presentation um in the past uh, for one of my speech classes mm-hmm. and so I recommended it was like all oh, the new spinos the spinosaurus being bipedal and stuff in the center mass being shifted and such yeah it was it was weird but it's interesting though to see topics like that um be kind of introduced years ago but are still being played a lot today um Mm -hmm. and i'm i don't know how i feel though about spinosaurus because i mean i love spinosaurus i mean spinosaurus is really awesome but But. it's like (laughs) yeah yeah just like it's cool and all but it's almost at a point where people are getting too excited with their discoveries and almost um, putting stuff out in literature that doesn't necessarily make sense. And this goes, I mean, I could relate this all back to the Morse information. You could find something and you could describe it and it's gonna sound awesome. But if you don't put the fossils that you're, that you're talking about into context with the formation, with the ecology and everything, it, someone's gonna come back and, and and um, someone's gonna come back and basically debunk your your opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, it goes all the way back to the bone wars. I mean, back there's there's been people. I mean, if you look at the original, um, like some of the original Morrison taxa that like OC Marsh um, classified, especially with Chimera. I did this while I was doing my Chimera source um, post uh, a week ago. Is that three Chimera source species were debunked? Um, uh, that were described by Marsh. So uh-huh. it's a matter of like, and this is how I saw the whole discovery with the whole quadrupedal Spinosaurus is that people got too excited. <laughs> yeah, like Spinosaurus, people, it had small legs, so it was quadrupedal. There you go. Yeah, yes, and then, then there, because once you like the paper that came out earlier this year about it being like a water heron and stuff, mm-hmm. once you start reading, oh, this kind of makes sense. This all kind of starts to make sense. Uh, because I mean, theropod dinosaurs, birds, more related, yeah. you know. Was, it, it, as soon as you start reading, it's like, yeah, duh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and what do you and mean? It wasn't a super fast ninja in the water yeah. that you know could hunt anything, you know? Like, what do you yeah, mean? It's no. not like that. <laughs> yeah, paleopolitics. As I said before, paleopolitics always gets gets in the way with stuff. So and fanboyism. Don't forget the fanboyism. Yeah, yeah. Trust me. Uh, and I followed under that. I followed under the whole quadrupedal Spinosaurus fanboy gang for the longest time. So I'm guilty. Of- well, <laughs> me too. <laughs> I mean, okay. What are what are your in your opinion? What is like some controversial things in paleo that like people don't really talk about? All right. You know, what? I'm just gonna throw it out there. I'm a pro nano. I'm a nano person. You're a nano person. What? I'm and and I and I'm not a, and I'm not afraid to talk about it because. There's, in my opinion, there's a ecological reasoning for the existence of nano. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reasoning is, is, and actually, 
it's it's one of those things where you got to put everything to, into context. So you got to reference like Morrison and stuff mm -hmm. um, for this stuff, and um, and then Morse o resides in Tyrannosaurs and their and their niches and their fun and their functions in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at the Campanian, so if you look at Tyrannosaurs, you have your Tyrannosaurines and you have your Albertosaurines, right? Two different groups of of Tyrannosaurs. Mm -hmm. um, and Albertosaurians were dominant. I mean, they were very diverse, right? I mean, you had Albertosaurus, um, Gorgosaurus. Displaysaurus. Um, well, Displaysaurus I ran actually. Okay, my I bad. believe. But then I think, like, uh, like Lythernax is considered under there's lots of these much more lighter built Tyrannosaurs are cl classified under the Albertosaurians, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we, so you see them like dominate throughout the late cretaceous until you hit the malastriscian or Maastricht malastriscian in hell creek and they just go away they're gone mm -hmm. but they but 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 <laughs> but where did they go where did they go they are so successful in their own ecosystems i mean they range from alberta all the way down to new mexico mm -hmm. and then then poof they're gone that that doesn't make sense. <laughs> that doesn't make sense for that to happen. And um, so, in my opinion, no one has considered the idea that could Nano Tyrannus be an Albertosaurian. Mm -hmm. And 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 people are like, well, where's the evidence of a Tyrannosaurian coexisting with an Albertosaurian? Um, if you we look at a fairly new formation, the Aguja Formation in um, Western Texas. Mm -hmm. There's actually, and I can't um, talk about it much more because um, there's still a lot going along with the research behind it. Because the Aguja formation is still fairly new in the record. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of the animals you see described in there are are still considered indeterminate. The only, um, the only like known genera from that formation, or is Dinosuchus and Critosaurus. Okay. Like Critosaurus, only known dinosaur for sure from that formation, but there are an Albertosaurine. There's actually possibly two Albertosaurines in that formation. Wait, what is the date of that and formation? It's Campanian. It's okay. 75 million years old. Yeah, but then this is going to be a game changer. There is also the possibility of a new species to Tyrannosaurus. You mean like like, not you're not the talking about Tyrannosaurus batar, right? You're talking about like, in general no. Tyrannosaurus. This is some, this is like you're you're gonna have Tyrannosaurus rex, de depending on who you are. Tyrannosaurus R, then Tyrannosaurus this new species. Is this a paper that's being worked on too, or is this? It's in the works. Um, it's been in the works for the longest time, and the and they found a metatarsal, and a few um um digits um uh, and um un and um claws that was that were like matched right up to tyrannosaurus rex okay interesting okay that's spicy but in the environment you have something literally like copy and pasted from the hell creek formation because mm -hmm. you have adrosaurs of course you have dinosuchus in there but then you have um actually we, we see a lot of similar um groups of dinosaurs from there we have um Ankylosaurs, we have Ceratopsians, um, and then we also have like I know there's ideas of there being um, Archaeoraptorids and Troodontids in that formation. So we're seeing basically a, a large, basically an older version of Hell Creek in Texas, mm -hmm. where there's going to be a Tyrannosaurian coexisting with maybe not just one but two Albertosaurians. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So, there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any like argument that says that a an Albertosaurian can coexist with the Tyrannosaurian, and and as I mentioned at the beginning, you could you could look back at the Morrison formation. The Morrison formation is actually probably one of the best examples because any every dinosaur across the board from sauropods to ornithopods to theropods it's all about niche partitioning and how you play a role in your environment mm -hmm. uh, 
let's look at Allosaurus versus Torvosaurus. Allosaurus basically was what that smaller built theropod that could that could you know bully the other dinosaurs and hunt in groups and take down large prey. Where Torvosaurus, big bully that can basically come around and bully off um, bully off Allosaurus, but can hunt it on its own. Um, or in groups if it wanted, and it can hunt down larger prey much more easily. Mm-hmm. So if you pause for a second, you actually kind of think about it. You have Torvosaurus, which, by the way, is nearly double the size and mass of, of Allosaurus. I've seen it in person. It is terrifying. Yeah, it's a uh, big-ass dinosaur. <laughs> it is. I mean, like, I recently saw Elvis... Uh, at the Cincinnati Museum, they have it next to an al- an Allosaurus. Mm-hmm. It's near double the triple the size of of Allosaurus, and they're thinking that animal could have gone as big or as bigger than T Rex too. It's kind of crazy. Torvosaurus, so, really? Torvosaurus, yep. Torvosaurus tanneri. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I didn't think people. I didn't think you could get as big as like Tyrannosaurus, like in terms of like weight as well. Oh no, not not in terms of weight, but I mean in terms of like just general size got it got it oh yeah yeah That's so, so terrifying it i mean it's terrifying to look at in person i mean it's a scary animal uh and um but here's the thing though you have a smaller group of theropods that can coexist with a larger theropod group mm-hmm. in oak creek like i could go down and start listing lots of the animals from hell creek i mean probably most of the um hell creek dinosaur genera I mean, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Triceratops, and Monosaurus, um, tri- um, Triceratops, D- Dakota. I mean, you know, it's when you look at the the um, faunal list for um, for the Hell Creek Formation, and you compare it to any other formation, especially Judith and Two Medicine. Mm-hmm. Hell Creek is so condensed to the point where it's like, cool. You know, you, you almost go out there and you already know where you're going to be fine. You're going to find lots of Triceratops and Monosaurus, maybe some T-Rex. Mm-hmm. You already know where, where you could go out to places like Judith and you'll be like, okay, I could find uh, Medusa Ceratops or I could find this. Yeah, there's a big um, diversity of dinosaurs there. More, it's more diverse. But for some reason, we try to not diversify the, the, the ecology of the Hell Creek Formation. And once, when with that factor, on top of the other factors, there's an ecological reason why a Nano Tyrannus could coexist with the T Rex there. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I could go on. I mean, because here's the thing: a lot for the, for the longest time, people have you know gone over the whole morphologic, um, like differences in like the tooth, the teeth, the amount of teeth, the size of the arms. Which again, I mean, this is a very fairly reasonable argument how do arms shrink <laughs> um, <laughs> or i mean seriously if you I, I and i've seen it if you compare a nano tyrannus arm next to a t-rex arm it is like a third lo- longer bones don't shrink there's not an animal in this world that has bone shrink over time mm-hmm. but again I, i'm just making like the general like oh i'm a pro nano tyrannus um like argument like I mean that's like but that's, no, that's, like, that's almost like coming out the closet pretty much. Like, <laughs> yeah, I am a I'm a nano believer. <laughs> yeah, basically, I mean that's how I kind of feel. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, no, seriously though, I mean, and here's the thing: it's it's like what I'm talking about. You got to put the fossils into context. Mm-hmm. You got to, and and once you start really thinking about, it, it's like. Why aren't we? Why aren't there more people out there who consider Nano as a valid genus? More academics. Once you, because mm-hmm. here they don't put everything into the scope. And actually, if you look at all the papers that that are pro Nano, or I mean pro anti, or I mean, why am I saying pro anti Nano? Anti Nano. Uh huh. Yeah, pro anti Nano. Uh, but if you look at all the papers that are like anti Nano, they're they're referencing their own papers. Ah. Uh. I mean, if you look at the authors, you'll see Thomas Carlot, you'll see Horner, you'll, you'll see these recurring authors and co-authors in all these papers. Mm-hmm. So, so one way or one one shape or form, these papers are self-biased. Mm-hmm. So, kind of my stance on it. 
But I think Nano's going to come into a new life, and I have faith in Nano. But here's the thing: like, if 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 histology work is done, and it comes out to be Tyrannosaurus Rex, I'm I'm cool with it. I've had my fight. <laughs> I've had my. I, I'm very open to it. Uh, if, I, if they actually find molecular evidence that's a just a juvenile T-Rex, cool. I'm just gonna go out and find a Tyrannosaur and just name it Nano Tyrannus. <laughs> <laughs> like here it is, I found it, the Nano Tyrannus. Like screw you guys. Screw uh, you guys, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually interesting because you you probably heard about the whole North Carolina State Museum with the dueling dinos and such. Yes. Well, it's interesting because I'm. I know, I can't say how I know a lot about the dueling dinos, but I do. Um, and the interesting thing is, is this, and again, I'm going to go back to paleopolitics here, um, is you know how they're advertising it. It's a Tyrannosaurus, it's, they're advertising it like as a they Tyrannosaurus. Fought. Yeah, but chances are they just fell in the same like sediment layer when they died. Is that yeah. what you're going to say? So, 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 Actually, let me break it down to you, all right? So let's say you're the Bank of America, and I'm the friends of the North Carolina State Museum, okay? okay? Yeah, because the Bank of America was, like, the biggest, like, biggest sponsor in that entire, like, $22 million, pro- $22 million project, I think it is, mm-hmm. that they're putting in. Um, so if I were to come up to you and say, hey, we have this possible nano tyrannus in, in, in battle with a... Um, a uh, it's and I don't think it's a triceratops either. I don't think it's a triceratops. I thought it was a new species of tricerat or um, ceratopsian. Um, so, so yeah. So let's say if I come up to you and I say, "Hey, we um, we were wanting to buy this possible t- nano tyrannosaur, and and er, um, that is in position with a new species of ceratopsian. You're you're, you're going to be like, what like? What's a nano tyrannosaur? What's this new? What's a ceratops? And what's all this? Mm-hmm. But if I came up to you and said, "Yo, real crap, we want to buy the world's most complete, hundred percent complete juvenile T. Rex interlocked in battle with a with a triceratops," you're gonna give me all your money, right? Of course, I mean, it sounds way more badass. Like, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, and here's the thing, and it's funny because if you. It, because they're 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 pushing this whole like it's a t-rex and stuff right because it's publicity it's publicity because mm-hmm. no one's gonna show up to to the exhibit opening if, if it's a nano tyrannus right because half the kids i mean grant you know there's that those kids out there that that can pronounce dinosaurs at four years old yeah that are i can't even fathom pronouncing uh and then but for the most part if you're a parent you're gonna be like, what the heck's a nano you know a nano tyrannus mm-hmm. if yeah, it's for advertising it's, sake. Yeah. 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 But here's the interesting thing. If you look at all the interviews with like Dr. Zano mm-hmm. and you you could tell okay, that I'm not going to lie all all the all the best respects to Dr. Zano, but that sounds oh. that sounds like a super villain name. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Zano. But, uh, anyway, go keep going. Yeah, so, yeah, so um if you look at the interviews with Dr. Zano, mm. it you can almost like I can almost like tell like like, she is very open-minded, and that's and I like Doctor Zano because of that. Because there's some people out there, there's some academics who are like so stuck on Nano Tyrannus, right? I mean, like no Nano. There's some people who would, you know, take that to their grave. Yeah, I, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it, it so that, uh, and not to put on names, but it, but someone's last name has to do with an automobile. Um, <laughs> Bar. Um. Anyway. Uh. But uh. Yeah. Anyways. The um. But like, if you listen to her talk about this specimen, she's very open-minded, which is good, because, again, this is just like the pro nano in me. I just think she knows that there's something special with this specimen, and she's gonna figure it out. And this is what's gonna happen. Um. Is they're gonna do histology work on it. They're gonna figure out. That it's like. Oh my god, it's a new species of Tyrannosaur called Nano Tyrannus. And it's gonna be like this huge new thing, which means more money. Um But in the end we've known about this for like 30 years. <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. It's 
yeah so that's it, it the pro nano in me kind of sees that happening that they're advertising SQRX. they're going to find out it's nano through histology work they're going to publish it it's going to break the news it's going to break the pal- it's going to break paleontology and they're going to make money off of it mm-hmm. paleopolitics it's inter- okay it's interesting because personally i'm against nano i'm not like I, I, it doesn't make sense to me personally. I mean, I see your side, and I, it also makes a lot of sense. I think, I think obviously we need more research on it to like oh, really yeah. like get it, you know, confirmed. Well, and... I do also got to say that wait a year or two, not just because of the histology, but because of other specimens. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. interesting. Um, oh well, that wasn't what. Um, there's, there's, there's gonna be some stuff. There's gonna be some stuff coming in the in the next year or two. Okay. Um, and, and that's uh, I, I would say that's next year or two at least I, it, it could possibly come out later I don't know what the status is but there's going to be some stuff mm-hmm. uh, so, but because but that's my case of like the, the more the merrier right mm-hmm. and in this case where there's specimens out there like the Jane like the Jane specimen I think it's a, I think it's a juvenile Rex because if you compare it to dueling dinos there's it's totally different morph types but again morphology but it is basically morphology is irrelevant unless if you put it into perspective Mm -hmm. basically exactly needs context Um, yeah you gotta give it context um and that's and and unfortunately that's a lack of that's a huge lacking in a lot of the newest papers and such is that people aren't putting these things into context and they're just going to be and all the and all their arguments that they're presenting in these papers are just going to be turned around and debunked later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, I rest my case on uh, splitting versus <laughs> splitting versus lumping. <laughs> no, that's very interesting because I, I I had never had this conversation before with someone about like that splitting versus lumping, and I think you gave me a very unique perspective on it, especially for the the case for Nano Tyrannus. Well, I still, I'm still not all the way convinced yet. Yeah. Like, obviously, I, you know, switch. I, I I'll wait for expect- a paper. And it was funny because I actually did a live stream, like, um, on my Instagram, like talking about. It. I had a lot of like people who are on there that were like so anti nano, and then like they they texted me like after this, like, you're on something. We're publishing the paper right now <laughs> and such. Uh, but again, I I was like. Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm just shedding light on stuff. I don't, I don't expect people to take this and run with it. I need, there needs to be more stuff. There needs to be more specimens. Yeah, for I'm sure. just, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I'm just putting yeah, some right. context. It's kind, of, it's kind of food for thought for now. Um, mm-hmm. it, I help understand further research, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I mean, you're just, so. you're just giving your opinion on on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, dang. What what other like controversial stuff do you have like opinions uh, on? What's your opinion on like uh, fanboyism, like theropod fanboyism? Like, okay, we all love theropods. Theropods are sick, man. But like, people gotta theropod. calm down <laughs> sometimes. In my here's, here's my thing. Everyone like laughs at me sometimes because I like hadrosaurs. Like, I love hadrosaurs. Ha- okay, ha- uh, okay. The ha- people who like hadrosaurs are the chillest people, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have so much love for people who love hadrosaurs. Yeah, I don't know well, why people laugh at you for this. Messed I, up. I, it's fun because I mean they're so underappreciated, but they're some of the most diverse animals. They're some of the most diverse dinosaurs we see. Um, they're on every continent except Antarctica for now. Uh, I guarantee <laughs> they're going to Antarctica, uh, uh, but no one talks about them. Um, but here's the thing: it's like your rank is like Tyrannosaurs, Ceratopsian, Sauropods, and Hadrosaurs is like at the very bottom, or Raptors. Raptors up there with tyrannosaurs or mm-hmm. dromaeosaurs but like i if i'm gonna be honest i don't really pay much to that and if, if i'm gonna be honest i i don't really notice it um i don't know why i'm so focused on some of this other stuff uh that i don't really think about it too much mm-hmm. yeah so i don't know i don't know um what's how your, i feel on just what's your favorite hadrosaur why? What's your favorite hadrosaur? Oh, Myasaur. I love Myasaur. Yeah, I respect that. It's a man of taste. <laughs> or, it, or actually, because I because we're talking about hadrosaurs now, I do gotta mention for the past three years, 
our team, it was actually interesting. Um, so back in 2018, mm-hmm. um, September of 2018, our, our guys were out there and I was in high school. Um, so of course I wasn't able to attend any of the, any of the dig trips. I still haven't, I've never been out West digging dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. This summer it's going to happen. I'm going to make damn sure it's going to happen. Um, <laughs> and I don't, on the last day of uh, us digging in this lease that we ha- got, um, the um, one of our guys was walking back to the truck, and he tripped on something. Mm-hmm. It was a um, well, he he tripped on a vertebra from a duckbill dinosaur. And that vertebra took um, basically transformed into many different bones. That's so cool. So it's well, like, it's, imagine you're just like walking around, you fall, like, ow, and then you, you look down, you see a bunch of cool, like, fossils. Well, here's the thing. Uh-huh. Uh, so most of your hadrosaurs in this formation, and the, so this is Judith River formation, so we're around 77 to 73 million years old. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have Brachylosaurus, you have, um, you have Gryposaurus, but most of those animals are around 30 feet. This one's if we're thinking we're still gonna find we still gotta kind of analyze the buns a little bit more it's almost i want to say shanktungasaur size but it's nearly 40 foot that's a big hadrosaur it's possibly a new it's possibly a new species has it not been described yet i'm guessing no actually believe it or not we're still digging it out of the ground oh oh really okay interesting we've been i mean it was discovered back in 2018 but now well i mean we're still digging it but i'm telling you what though the bones i've because i've been sent pictures of the bones and such and the bone quality is impeccable i mean mm-hmm. um the dentary has all the teeth in it the maxilla has all the teeth in it but here's the here's the, here's the kicker is we haven't found any of the top of the skull yet which is that's the diagnostic yeah that's feature. the that's the big one yeah, yeah. this could be anything because here's, here's the thing it, we're thinking there's a possibility it's just a really large grip of source okay it, or an extremely large grip of source or it's a lambiosaurian oh okay okay the other that's the other possibility that's a lambiosaurian um we uh, but we don't have any evidence basically towards any side yet. We still got to find that top region of the skull for us to actually go and diagnose it. But we're hoping by the end of this year, we're going to, we're going to be, it's going to be fully excavated and it's going to be start in the full analysis process and preparation process. Um, so it could be described and such. Uh, so another new head probably coming out within the next couple of years. So, in that case, that will be my favorite hadrosaur because it's gonna be it's gonna be found <laughs> by the, people. Yeah, it's the one like I know, I know who found them. <laughs> it, the one I fanboyed over for a year uh, mm-hmm. because um, I, I remember my buddy uh, actually Aaron uh, mm-hmm. he um, texted me at like ten o'clock at night um, on the last day um, before they're heading back, and it was funny because I was um, actually like because he collected a small jacket for me and stuff. So I was like getting really excited. I was like getting stuff all ready uh, for it to come. I was like fanboying over it. Mm-hmm. And then he texted me and he said, yeah, so we just found this new dinosaur. And I think I lost my crap for the rest of the night. I don't, I don't think I slept that hard. I was so excited. That's um, so cool though. No, you just, you deserve it, to be excited. Uh, and the cool thing is, is I mean, Grant, I'm going to be on the tail end of it, but who knows? It may be, it, it may be named after your boy. So, um, here, Aiden Soros. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Aiden Soros. I, I feel like being Jimmy to his uh, dinosaur name. Uh, the one that that is. Um, I know it's not going to be a therapist, but um, Jimmy from the Dinosaur Podcast mm-hmm. was like, if I dinosaur, it's going to be. Uh, uh, it's going to translate from Latin to. Uh, it will. Um, you'll. It will kill you six times before you hit the ground, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I swear, how, how to make someone in just a in, in over a duration of three years or so? But uh, uh-huh. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what comes out of it, and hopefully this summer we actually get to dig up the rest of it. Um, our plans right now are still tentative and such, so we're 
So trying to work out leases and such to try to go out and um, dig the remainder of this animal up. Um, mm. Who knows? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how, how this all comes out. And it's actually, hopefully, hopefully we can articulate it. I want to see it articulated. <laughs> um, I just want to see what this animal kind of looks like. I mean, like, the bones aren't, like, are pretty good quality, would you say? Or no? Oh, I mean, these are some of the best hadrosaur material in terms of completeness I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, these, these, but like, so on the dentary, um, in, the, in the tooth battery, it has all the teeth. And actually, in rare cases, do you actually have a little membrane of bone, like a little thin piece of bone that actually covers the other side of the tooth battery? Mm -hmm. This one is all there it's fully preserved wow it's like that um but the thing is though we haven't found like the beak or or any like any, we're, we're trying to see if we can find any because of how preserved the bones are we're trying to find anything that would resemble the structure of the beak mm -hmm. um but i i don't know anything about that right now um there may be something i, I may ask around to see if they found any like keratin or anything in um in the um in the pre maxilla bones and such, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm yeah I mean, I'm 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 kind of like getting excited just thinking about it. Just that's thinking. that's super cool. So like, how long? How much longer do you think it will take for them to get it out of the ground? I, if if we're out there this year, I, I because we got most of it out. Um, I would say probably if not this summer, but next summer latest. Next summer latest. Got um, it. Oh, actually, um, one thing to also know is that this specimen, uh, when they found the um, the uh, ischium, the the top um, of the pelvic penis? bone, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, they actually found ossified tendons um, lining the tail, just like what they found in Leonardo, uh, the the mummified brachylophosaur. And I was looking at the picture, mm -hmm. and you can. Of, of the of the ischium in the ground and you can obviously see like the top of the ischium but you can see all the ossified tendons like running off of it into the um part semi-articulated tail mm -hmm. of that was so. why do why do all these hadrosaurs get so preserved so like immaculately was it you, was it mainly just because know. of the new like the what do you call this the, the environment they were in yeah the, the, the deposition environment is very dependent on on the preservation it's it's kind of a weird though um and i and, and if I were to give like an answer to that, really, I would say I don't know. But if, like, if I was forced to give an answer, it would be like just probably because they're more common. They're one of the more common animals to find. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's bizarre. It's bizarre on how hydrosaurs are like the ones to become mummified and such. Yeah, so, and they're also everywhere. <laughs> yeah, again, on every continent except Antarctica. So, mm -hmm. so that was, that's super interesting. Thing. Okay. Okay. Can we can we talk about Torvosaurus? Oh yeah, we're talking about Torvosaurus. Why do you love Torvosaurus? I need to know. What makes so, it so cool? What what is a Torvosaurus? You may ask. A Torvosaurus is a megalosaur dinosaur from the Upper Morrison of North America and also Europe. But um, I could I could care less about Torvosaurus grinneri because it's it's European and I'm I'm focused on my guy here, um, Torvosaurus. Um, Tanner, I, our boy TT, and, and, TT, let's go, <laughs> TT. Uh, but the reasoning that I love Torvosaurus so much is because, again, what is a Torvosaurus? I just said it's a megalosaur. And megalosaurs are known from Europe, right? Mm -hmm. It's one of these theropod dinosaur groups that you that is known from Europe, but we're seeing them in North America. Mm -hmm. It's a megalosaur from North America, which is totally unheard of. And it's one of those animals that kind of flies under under the radar. Yes, some people know about it, but not a lot of people know about it. Um, it's because really it's only known from one documented specimen, which is B twenty twenty, the holotype specimen, but also other elements in that skeleton that had a look separately. Mm -hmm. uh, but like the this Elvis specimen isn't even like in the whole like nomenclature yet it's not even published it doesn't have a it doesn't have a ne it doesn't necessarily have like a catalog number yet for the specimen really um it still, it's still yeah it's still that new i looked for a long time and i've asked many people and they're still in the process of like trying to figure out 
um, like are all these phones associated or whatever. For the most part, it is, but there's some controversy about that um, that I that I know very little about. Um, yeah, it's 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 a whole weird thing. But I know um, when I was researching it, like Elvis, the Elvis specimen doesn't even have a catalog number yet. Like mm-hmm. it's not in the list. Like if you look at every paper that's under Torvasaurus, there's nothing with this new specimen. Wow. Okay. It's, I didn't know that. It's really new. Um, but um, but I think I think my love for Torvasaurus has grown because I mean, I was at the Cincinnati Museum um, where they have Elvis and they have it um and i remember seeing pictures from when the new dinosaur hall opened and i was just like yes it's you know it's it's a new torvasaur specimen and it looks awesome but the, what makes it better is they mounted it next to an allosaurus mm-hmm. you know for comparison for, yeah i mean you know for the longest time allosaurus has been the the big bad boy of the jurassic but once you put torvasaurus next to it it's nearly again it's nearly t-rex size it's double it's double the size of Allosaurus easily, maybe even three times as, as large as Allosaurus. Mm-hmm. And you're looking at this thing, and, and, and it's terrifying. It's terrifying. I mean, it's such a monster animal because um, the claw, the ma- the big manus claw on Torvosaurus, it's, it's, it's very similar shape to Allosaurus. Um, Allosaurus has a more robust or... How, how, how would I explain um, Allosaurus has a more curved in more like cur- angle words claw mm-hmm. um, in the center. Torvosaurus's claws are super robust and they curve, but they don't curve as much, but they're longer. They're like um, like one or two inches longer than Allosaurus. Mm-hmm. So it's basically, Torvosaurus is just a jacked up, literally, it was a jacked up. I mean, um, if you look at the huge, the upper arm bone, um, of Torvosaurus compared to Allosaurus, the, the proximal end is super robust. Mm-hmm. So this animal has really strong arms um, on top of a really elongated, almost Spinosaur-like snap. So there's some questions that comes up with Torvosaurus because of this new Elvis specimen that, that we still have to learn about. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of fuels the, you know, the excitement for what we're going to be learning about Torvosaurus and such. It's like Spinosaurus. It's literally a Morrison. It's literally a Jurassic version of Spinosaurus. I mean, didn't um, Spinosaurus descend technically from Megalosaurus, or Megalosaurus considered considered basal to Spinosaurus? So Megalos, actually, Spinosaurids, the Spinosauridae family, is actually um, derived off of Megalosauridae. Mm-hmm. So they're like a. Um, so yes, they are somewhat related, but very distant. Very distantly. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I was yeah. gonna say, I feel like people say like, I don't know, they treat <laughs> dinosaur like <laughs> family trees as like like Pokemon. You know what I mean? They do. They, and, and trust me. Um, there's actually this book I have. It's actually. Um, and I was obsessing over with a um, couple of my buddies last night on a group call. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's this book that came out not too long ago. I want to say like one or two years ago. It's called um, Dinosaurs. Like, um, it's a, it's an encyclopedia. It's like facts and figures, theropods, and, and dinosaur more. Oh, I, ha- I, have the, I have that book. The one by Eofauna? Yes. That book is, in my opinion, next in tier, probably close to that of a scientific paper. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is extremely detailed. It is my favorite book to read every time, um, just because there's so much in there, and there's so much you can grasp off of that. Mm-hmm. And, and exactly because they have that page there, it, um, that shows the relation of theropods. It's at the very beginning, and it's just like <laughs> it's kind of um, it's just like Pokemon. It's it's you start looking at the it's relation- a Pokedex, man. It's a it's a big Pokedex. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big Pokedex. dex um but yeah i mean but then there's a whole paper that came out two years ago about you know ceriskians being more closely related or net pods and stuff mm-hmm. trust me that and that's why i use talking about dinosaur groups and their relation to one another for the most part it's just because that whole thing just makes me want to throw up <laughs> uh but uh now i i i mean torvsaurus is cool 
because it's big, it's bad, it's nearly T Rex size. It's in my opinion scarier than T Rex. It's it's it it weighs half the it weighs as um it weighs half as much as a T Rex. It's mm-hmm. and it's near biggest T Rex and it, and it was and it probably acted more as an offensive predator. Mm-hmm. Um. And you put and you put all that together, and you got really a monster. You got a monster. Yeah. Of an I animal. mean, he is. Yeah. I mean, like I think. He, would you say the dinosaur revolution depiction of Torbosaurus was accurate? Actually, it's kind of interesting. Um, because that's the one with the whole broken jaw allosaurus, right? Yes. I think they nailed that. I think they absolutely nailed that because, and I have, slight, uh, and I have a slight like conspiracy that they that someone told him about the elvis specimen or something or something like that in the past and i was like hey we have this new specimen that shows taurosaurus has this elongated snout because if you look at the dinosaur revolution taurosaurus and you compare it to um elvis it's nearly identical in terms of like its skull shape and such Mm -hmm. um because actually um fun fact the original holotype byu 20 um 2020 uh that skull that's on there, the skull that people have been using for the past 20 years is no joke, nothing more than an exaggerated Allosaurus skull with Megalosaurus, with a Megalosaurus fenestral opening. Oh, that's really? all it is. It's an elongated Allosaurus skull. That's I, all it is. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. I genuinely did not know that. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. All they, all they found was the premax and part of the lower dentary. They yep. didn't find anything. So they were like, "All right, because, let's give it some uh, some Allosaurus. So let's put make the fenestra bigger. There we go. We're at, we're done." <laughs> no, it they didn't off of Allosaurus. They literally like this is coming from people who work at BYU. They actually took an Allosaurus skull and it, and it elongated it and took the the fenestral bones or the fenestral openings of Megalosaurus mm-hmm. or the respective openings of Megalosaurus and slapped it onto that skull. Wow, that's it. That's it. Wow, <laughs> that's interesting. Why yeah, did they do so, that? Just convenience. Because here, oh, because they didn't find much material of the skull to kind of give it its full shape. With the new Elvis specimen, they have the full uh, maxilla bone. Mm-hmm. They have the full max, and it's really interesting because it's really compressed. It's really compressed, unlike other megalosaurs. Um, but in my opinion, um. Um, with the whole Torosaurus gurner um, or gurneri, that European species, they make they the skull shape on that looks totally different. Mm-hmm. And, and and I mean, really, if you look at the history of Torosaurus gurneri, it's still a fairly new species. Mm-hmm. They 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 made it made the skull or the overall actually the overall appearance of this of this animal look totally different from its other species. Maybe it's a new genus of Megalosaurus? I don't know. It's just it just seems really weird uh, that they classified as Torvosaurus. Yes, the bone, the uh, maxilla bone that they found of this animal looks a lot like the like the maxilla bone with Elvis. But when they when they design the rest of the skull, it makes it doesn't it doesn't look Torvosaurus to me. It mm-hmm. just it's yeah it's it's odd. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Okay, I didn't. I did not know that. I, 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 when I saw it, I assumed that, you know, they based it on the European specimen, and I didn't do any further research into it. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, because on your upcoming pin, I think you took lots of inspiration from the holotype specimen. Yes, I did. Yep. <laughs> I could tell because the skull is a lot more boxy and stuff, and I, and and no, no fault to you because I mean no one knows about again. Elvis isn't even in the literature yet, so mm. I mean, people are still getting accumulated to this new Torvosaurus look and such. So now, unlike Spinosaurus, Torvosaurus isn't gonna go on four legs and three and um and you know have a tail like a duck or something like that. But <laughs> have a tail like a duck. Uh huh. It's actually interesting on the um on speaking of tails uh, on Elvis. It's um if you um actually look the at the original fossils that are on that mount, mm-hmm. literally from the sacrum back, from literally the tail, they didn't find any of the tail, like not one vertebra from the tail they found. Mm-hmm. Interesting. 
yeah i was like there's no tail on this animal so they actually had to take um recomposite the um holotype specimen of torvosaurus and slap the holotype tail on it mm -hmm. and well blow it up to proportion because torvosaurus has a really long tail actually um which is interesting um evolutionarily and morphologically because what and overall in the animal kingdom a tail is used for locomotion and, and chasing things mm -hmm. this is a lightweight animal. i mean they only suspect this animal with three tons so maybe i don't know i don't know it's just it maybe this was the animal that kind of put allosaurus in its place maybe but, i mean that's what i feel like personally but that might just be biased because of um you know, <laughs> pop, pop culture. <laughs> oh, here's the thing, because in my opinion, but I, and it's weird how I feel like that, because I feel like we would be seeing megalosaurids go into the Cretaceous then. Um, because we see allosaurids, actually, if, I mean, if you look at Acrocanthosaurus and compare to allosaurus, there are so many similarities. Well, except the arms are sh shorter, but if you look at the overall shape of, like, the hand of mm -hmm. Acrocanthosaurus, Especially the claws. Um, if you look at the, the claws of Acrocanthosaurus compared to Allosaurus, they are very extremely similar. The skull shape of Acrocanthosaurus and Allosaurus, extremely similar. The only real major difference is the sail, basically. Mm -hmm. Everything else very is literally, it's just, Acrocanthosaurus is just a big Allosaurus. Mm -hmm. um, with, with a hump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and, it, and it's because I've seen. I've seen Acrocanthosaurus at um, North Carolina State Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen multiple Allosaurus specimens, and you look at, and after you look at it for so many times, you're starting to realize that, you, duh, I, you can see why these people were classifying Acrocanthosaurus as an Allosauroid. Um, yeah, for a long time. Because, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, you, you, it, it, it's hard for me to explain on here. You just gotta look at it. Um, and, and and start comparing the two animals side by side and seeing that that evolutionary um, similarities. Uh, and there's even reports of an allosauroid dinosaur from like the um, from the um, oh it's in Texas. It's proto. It's, it lives at the same time as Protohadrus. It's known for the Arlington Archosaur site woodbine formation, um, which is slightly earlier. Than Acrocanthosaurus. So, so we might have we a may, new like Carcharodontosaur that lived in North America soon, probably. A new, new Allosaurid, yes. Um, and because they, it, I looked at a paper that was talking about the um, taxa of the Arlington Archosaur site, which is right outside of Dallas, and they and in there it says Allosaurid uh, or Allosaur species, but and but then in parentheses it says Allosaurid. So, it's yeah, it's it's gonna be. It's going to be interesting to see what that comes out to be. I wonder if it's going to be like a more basal allosaurid, like allosaurus, because I mean, allosaurus is a very basal theropod dinosaur. I mean, it's one of the first big groups of theropods. Mm -hmm. um, but you think, you got to wonder, is it more like an acrocanthosaur allosaurid, a more primitive allosaurid, or is it going to be more like really basal allosaurid? So I don't know what material they found of it. I've never seen it, but. If it's earlier than Acrocanthosaurus, and if it's going to look like an Acrocanthosaurus, I'm all for it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I love Acrocanthosaurus. Okay. Honestly, and also, actually, that's, a, that's actually the next comic that's going to come out um, next Sunday, so that's going to be fun. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. That's going to be, yeah. I, yeah, I've, I've seen you working on that. that. That looks really awesome, so. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I got, I got a, um, a, uh, well, from the Glen Rose um, track site, I actually got a um, replica, a cement replica um, Acrocanthosaurus footprint mm -hmm. um, that was from the Glen Rose site when they allowed people to come in and start casting the footprints and such. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got one, and it's actually um, it's a garden ornament in my friend yard. That's so badass. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's just my Acrocanthosaurus uh, footprint. You know, they just walk around yeah. here every once in a while. Yeah. If you got yeah. more than well, one. Ooh. People don't always mix mix this mix my house up with another person. This is like, alright, there's the dinosaur footprint. That's where you know. <laughs> people people know who you are, they'll track you down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. well, right. Trust me. Yeah. Talk me so <laughs> Alright, let's see. So we're actually almost out of time. Um 
Is there anything you'd like to like add on, Aiden, or uh -huh. you'd like to like say super quick? Uh, I'm not su super sure actually. Uh, uh, not really. I, it's been fun. This has been super fun. Um, yeah, no, yeah, no. I had, I had fun. I, I feel like I learned a lot actually. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm like going in and out. I mean, it's almost midnight here. Yeah, no, uh, man. I feel it. Uh, yeah, you're probably like fighting to like stay awake. Like I gotta do this for the stream, for the for the podcast. Yeah, I've been kicking my butt. Um. So yeah, you're good. I've man. been. I'm, my my brain's starting to shut down on me but you know it it's it's all fun it's all fun so i mean it was i always tend to ramble about dinosaurs and i think my parents are thankful that i'm not ram rambling on dinosaurs to them right now so <laughs> yeah um how can people reach you they want um to so you. yeah so if you want to reach me um I am under, I'm more active on Instagram. So I'm under Dino Keeper Aiden. Um, for those who came here from Instagram, you saw the link or or you saw my thing on, on um, Andy's story. And, um, but uh, I also have a Facebook page. So um, for my like consulting business, because I am a, um, I'm a scientific consultant with some companies. Uh, so you can find me on Facebook under Aiden Rouse Paleontological Educational and Consulting Services. I post some stuff on there, more so just duplicates of what I post on on Instagram. But which basically means just follow me on Instagram. Uh, I post. I try to start posting some really interesting stuff. I do. I do live streams all the time because I'm bored. So I always chat about dinosaurs <laughs> nearly every day. Um, I think I think that I think that about wraps it up for me. Oh, and look out for me on on June twenty first in Why Dinosaurs. Fun fact. So yeah, Why Dinosaurs documentary coming to a streaming service near you. Anyway, guys, yeah. thank you guys for joining the stream. Um, Aiden, I know you you couldn't see what I drew, but I think you'll like it a lot. Um, I will oh, send wow. it to you right after we get off. But yeah, hope you guys had fun drawing with me and talking with Aiden. Um, I'll see you guys on Wednesday for my usual art stream. And then I'll see you guys Sunday for the next guest. Anyway, guys, have a great evening. Good night, y'all. See you guys. <laughs>